Hey everyone, welcome to the pre-game hangout. I am Eric Scott to be. These are two of the other dungeon crawlers. More of us will be here shortly. So, I heard you all fought some demons last week or last time. It wasn't last, last week, was it? It was a couple weeks ago. But yeah. uh, I caught that fight on the on the VOD, and it was pretty impressive. So, good job, well done. Oh, thanks, Esther. No a lot of fun. Well, that's not true. I was going to say no spell slots left, but <laughs> very few, which is unusual because she's got a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think chat gave you back a spell slot. You should still. Yeah, have I don't highest. know that I marked that down. Looking at it, I don't think I did. So I can <laughs> totally cast Crown of Stars again to impress these Durthans. Oh heck yeah! I mean, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta show dominance somehow. <laughs> I see we got a uh, Rumpus, Original Angston, and Mystic Maniac saying hi to us. How y'all doing today? Excellent. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. Good to see you all. Yeah. So, what did you end up doing uh, two weeks ago, Eric? I had a medical thing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, I was on drugs during the time <laughs> that our game would have happened. So I was not really available to play in any <laughs> sensible way. I think we we translated some Rashemi in your name. Of course, you saw it in the VOD, but excellent. Yeah, I, I know it was funny because Aaron was like, "All right, um, I don't think Sebastian's going to want to do much. He's just going to, you know." He's going to be there, and they're going to do everything. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then during the VOT, it's like, uh-oh, we've maneuvered ourselves into a situation where Sebastian has to do something. Quick, let's uh, let's gloss over it. All oh, right, back to the action. <laughs> and that was pretty great. Uh, Mystic Maniac says, I hope you're doing okay now, Eric. I'm doing okay. Thank you very much for asking. I do not have any life-threatening illnesses. No, don't worry. Those of you who are disappointed, ha, 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 ha. Anyway. <laughs> I see. <yeah. laughs> oh, let me see so if I, I make her. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, are you done framing me, Yang Yang? Because I yeah. want to so show something off. So I got, so let's see. I'm going to move my chair, but I'll come back. Um, this. Behold, it may look like a mere uh, IKEA drawer unit, but I have been stocking that thing since frickin' October, and I got it. Oh, yeah. Week. I got awesome. two of them, in fact. Nice. Awesome. Now, it doesn't have, there's a, there's supposed to be, it's like a hat, but there's supposed to be like a top shelf, so you can actually put things on top of it. It's not just like the top drawer. Um, they did not have those, so I'm still stocking those on the IKEA website. I do have the actual drawer unit, and I can put like I don't know cardboard on top for now to deal with the hatlessness. But my God, because <laughs> I, I went to a convention over the long weekend, and the day I was gonna drive out um, and stay with my friend for the evening before, um, I key emails and they're like they're back in stock, and I'm like, friend, I'll be there later. <laughs> <laughs> so I went immediately to IKEA, um, and I got there at like I don't know four minutes after opening and I'm at the shelf by like 10 minutes after opening and there were two store pickers picking up one or more of these each for online orders and there was one civilian as well as me so that's at a minimum like three or four other <laughs> units immediately just bearing out of the you know 20 or something that they said online that they had so I was very glad that I was I didn't like I, that I would that morning because otherwise, I'm sure I wouldn't have got it. Excellent. So, yeah, the plan I, I is aligned. Hmm? I, I know how that is. You know, I tried and failed to get a PS5. I, I assume it's like <laughs> a similar type of journey. Yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't like. I feel like that's the sort of thing that's fun. It's like I would like the newest gaming system. This will be fun. I can play on it. Um, and that's from like the before times, but now with like supply chains, it's like, I would like a shelf that fits my room and then <laughs> yeah. I'll get it. And I'll be like, 
yes, yeah. I have this shelf that you I did can it. put things on in a tidier manner. Oh, I'd rather victory. have a PS5. Victory. <laughs> It's a kind of victory. It is. It's it's very satisfying. It must be very satisfying to like actually have a shelf for your room though that, that you like. Yes. Yeah. This is this is I'm waiting on the hats, but then that I'm gonna buy like one utility shelf at um Home Depot to go next to it, but those are always in stock. And then I'm done. I'm freaking done. Until I figure out some other kind of like, oh, I need this that I didn't think of before. But as far as my when I moved into this place six months ago, my list of things that I needed, that was the last. So, uh, Seldarine eight hundred one says, "Yes, shelves are glorious." <laughs> I mean, nobody's cheering for the PS five, probably because nobody's got one. <laughs> so well, freaking hard to get. We're all living in the um, supply chain situation together. So, yeah. You know, I heard um, that car lots were like empty of all cars oh, yeah. that were sold once upon a time yeah i missed that i didn't get a chance to go out and see that spectacle well i think it's i think it's still going you could probably go oh is I mean, it so the last time i went for service it was um not like ghost town empty mm-hmm. um but it definitely was wasn't where it was before um but because i i think i think most places there's like some floor models or because i'm thinking also of the fact that like people can't get like major appliances or you know stuff like that um but then like if you want to actually pick the one that you want and then you order it then it takes like months and months and months for it to actually come in Mm -hmm. and same with cars if you don't want to roll up and like get whichever of the few that they have and you're like well i want this features package or whatever then you gotta wait Mm, I see. I see. So mm-hmm. don't don't let your car <laughs> break down, <laughs> or get your like catalytic converter stolen. Yeah. So I'm so glad we bought patio furniture over Memorial Day, and we went to a place that had a bunch of stock for this sale, and we got the stuff we want. We got the last six chairs of the type we bought, because otherwise it's like, oh, well, sorry, you got to wait till November. Like, Ooh. man, I don't. <laughs> That sucks. I wish I'd thought about this, you know, when it was cold and rainy and I didn't want patio furniture, but I could have gotten it. I guess I should think about Oh, my goodness. Hey, Monk of Greyhawk, thank you so much for the five gift subs. Really appreciate (laughs) that. Awesome. Because I actually have a a little, like, balcony deck thing now. Mm. And I'm, I'm not used to this idea. I'm like, well, and and I move in and then it's like raining all the time. So of course I'm not out there. So now it's starting to almost not rain sometimes. And so Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do with deck? Sit on deck? Don't understand. Monday and Tuesday, I seem to recall, were very nice days. And then it's going to start raining again. So (laughs) yeah, it's looking a little gray. It is warmer though. Send my kids yeah. to school without jackets today. Ooh. Yeah, that's uh I hope that I hope that goes well. It's a milestone. They're yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I do not like spring and fall very much because it's one of those situations where it's really, really cold in the morning and then it's like a little uncomfortably warm in the middle of the day, and then it's back to being cold again later. And I'm like eh, I I have to carry my jacket around for six but hours I'm out of the, the day. Cardigan. Yeah. Yep. So you need a purse to stuff it in. Or I, I get the backpack. I should start wearing cardigans and or carrying a purse. You're right. That's what I should do. <laughs> oh, Rumpus Layers says... Layers a problem. Rumpus says that they brushed the uh, triple digits in temperature in the last two days. Oh, oh my God. Problem. Hello, Xenobite. Hello, Hi. Minigrowth. Well, I don't know how how closely you guys like follow the UA, but did you see that they released like a new giant based UA for DMV? I did see it. I didn't have time to look at it yet. Is it amazing? Um, I think it appeals. It might appeal more to me than most people because I really mm-hmm. enjoy like all across the battlefield you do. their own weapon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It has a, a lot of feats. It has one subclass for barbarians. It's got one for druid and 
believe it's got one for wizard. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. And then they have a bunch of like feats and stuff that are elemental or like giant or magic Do you guys do you guys find rune magic to be cool? I I've never quite been able to wrap my head around what rune magic actually is. I yeah, have I'm used not... it incorrectly in books. The spirit of it more than the rules of it. But otherwise yeah. I don't really get it. I'm not familiar <laughs> enough with it in 5e to comment intelligently like i have occasionally embraced it and used it in previous versions but in 5e um i haven't really kept up with it yeah i think the so first time I... about it yeah with the release of tasha's um you know they came out with the rune knight and that was the first time that i can mm-hmm. recall a uh, class in 5e actually using any there's any description or flavor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And rune magic is like exclusively associated with giants, right? It's very strongly associated with giants at the very least. Primordial I feel like there's today. other, yeah, I feel like there's other ways I see you like kind of connected back in the lore, but I have to admit the times I've used it most correctly were with giants. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giants and like harnessing the power of giants. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, I guess I never really thought about it, but like, how does, and do you, you know, do you guys know how rune magic differs from like the other magic system, like the, the basic magic system? No. La, 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 la. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> All right. The time I used it was for stone giants, um, which was a, the concept was. I think it's even in the Monster Manual that the stone giants carve things into themselves, carve runes into themselves, and then those sort of fill with the magic. Um, and and I don't remember if this was the thing I added on or if this was part of the whole deal, but it was like they they send, sort of enter a dream state, um, and and their magic is very like connected to the dream state, so they put a lot of importance on the things you dream. Um, oh, interesting. So... So it was like it was sort of like uh, pulling magic out of dreams, maybe. But uh-huh. it is one of those things, like you know, when you have a magic system. I mean, like Forgotten Realms in particular, it's like okay, magic comes from the weave, and then you have magic that's like, but it doesn't come from the weave. It's like okay, yeah. is this still magic? Is this a different thing? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um. Thanks so much for the prime sub, Meta Growth. Appreciate it. Um. Yeah, I find that to be like really fascinating. The other part that's interesting about like dream magic is I to me I closely associate it with like beholders because like that's like they dream shit. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to life. Yeah, that's their whole shtick. I love that, especially because beholders hate everybody else. So can you imagine being a beholder and you wake up and here's this like beholder kin thing that you dreamt? It's like your baby, but you hate it. Yeah, now you, you must fight to, to the it. death. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wake up and the, there's a hole in the wall where something smashed through, and you're like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop eating spicy food before bed. <laughs> that's how you get spectators. Do you want spectators? Because that's how you get them. There's one that I feel like. There are much weirder ones. I love that, yeah, like the undead beholder is not actually like a beholder that's undead. It's like a beholder that was created by a a beholder, another beholder dreaming about like having nightmares about undeath or something. Yeah, yeah. They dream of their well, maybe own death. Maybe that's the death tyrant. I, I believe that's which... the death tyrant. If they dream of their own death, maybe it's a death kiss. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's times where you can see that D&D is a Frankenstein of a whole lot of people having a whole lot of ideas. And sometimes it's glorious and sometimes it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember we were talking about Beholders like once upon a time a while ago. And then chat came up with a bunch of like really funny new Beholders. And I still really <laughs> want to play like a one shot with just like bonkers. Honey. Are we the Beholders or are we fighting the Beholders? <laughs> Find out. There. Or is the chat the beholders because they're watching us fight the beholders? Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I uh I looked up the uh, the UA stuff about giants right now. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say beholders. I was like, oh that's exciting. I'll just shoot off an email to Jeremy Crawford right now and say, okay, so the giants is cool, but what people really want. Yeah. What the people is really the path want. the path of the beholder. Do it. Whoa. Yes. I would be down. Like, give me a warlock that has like a couple of eye stocks. I'm down for that. Dude, a warlock making a pact with a beholder could be really interesting. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Like, Insert warlock what... brand here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What plane is the beholder connected to? Far around. Acceptable. Oh, that, that's a good one. So it, it's it's kind of like, um, uh, you know, the great old one pact. But uh, more specific, it's I like the that's... difference between the undying and the and the death pact. The, un yeah. the undead and the undying. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know okay. if for that particularly. This is also as long as we're splitting things. The pact of the fiend should come in devil and demon flavors. And I guess Yugoloths. Yeah. It re yeah. B Dave had a Yugoloth thought today that I was very pleased by because generally I feel like Yugoloths are there because we want one for each alignment. But but the neutral alignments I feel like get very like hair splitty because at the end of the day, like you could just draw a line down the middle and which one are you more like? But okay, bigger problem is it's very hard to have a brand that's neutral evil where you're like, sometimes I'm lawful and sometimes I'm chaotic. But he pointed out, he's like, well, basically it's like, I'm only out for myself. They're libertarians. And I love the idea of Yugoloths as libertarian fiends. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah, I think the way the fiend or like pact is presented leans pretty heavily toward devil yeah. fiend mm -hmm. pacts. But there's, I mean, yeah, you which would make it for a demon, but it's. You should do a different thing for demons. Yeah, you should really do a different thing. Like They should have a different one. There's an opportunity I to have different powers. Yeah. I still feel like you should, like, I mean, it would be cool if, like, you had to, like, to create more chaos in this, like, each time, like, every couple levels, like, you pick a different demon to go with and you have to, like, play them off of each other. I would enjoy that very much. Um, but I think it's probably a lot of intrusive rules for most people. So I don't see that happening anytime soon. So there's something interesting that uh, Mystic Maniac and this are discussing in the chat. Uh, so yeah. Mystic Maniac says, something I've always wondered, are dragons powerful enough to make warlocks? Well, I mean, follow-up question, Artemisia, is like how excited would Artemisia be to be a warlock <laughs> of the dragon? Uh, but Rumpus <laughs> says... I don't think it's power thing. I think it's that dragons don't have the planar connection. But, That's my argument. Yeah, mm. but don't dragons actually have like a special property in of themselves where they tend to warp the land like a like they influence. They're so magical that like just by existing yeah. in a certain place. So you could be like a demi patron, like you have enough power to do some like tap people into that. But I feel like at that point, it's your like it would get interesting but that's my fundamental argument is that like if you want to have clerics and you want to have warlocks they need to be mechanically different mm -hmm. and so a warlock is tapping a plane through a patron and a cleric is tapping a god which is basically a patron but they're getting the power directly from the entity right. so mm -hmm. a dragon needs if to be a warlock you could have a cleric of a dragon i feel like there's definitely dragons that get worshipped like gods yeah most um, of their and that are kobolds, and so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. and that feels that feels also plausible because they're if they have the ability to kind of like affect the land around them once they get to that ancient stage then they have enough like generative woo woo power that you could potentially argue for a cleric I would at my table I would say yes. Um but I would be like what if you wanted to be a dragon warlock I would make you make up a planar dragon. No. I wanted to say there are a few warlock packs um that don't seem to point to specifically planar powered creatures. They're bullshit. <laughs> so it's because they totally lost the plot. That's what happened. I will die on this hill. <laughs> Hexblade so, like, this one is a mess. Hexblade is a mess. Okay, okay, okay. I wasn't even going to talk about Hexblade, although Hexblade, you could make a pact with a very powerful 
powerful magic sword, sure. Yeah. But la okay. la 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 Raven Queen. Where I was gonna mention making a pact with like Strahd or mm -hmm. Azalin. So within their own demi plane of dread, they are very powerful. Mm -hmm. But like outside that demi plane. Yeah, that's right. You're plugged into the domain, is my argument. Hmm. It's the same reason why you can make a celestial pack with a unicorn, which is the CR8. Yeah. What is that? Yep. But if the unicorn's like, yeah, yo, here's your hookup, plug, and I'm just going to feed you spells through this, that's fine. I also think that gives you more story options. Because if you want the like super powerful patron who inevitably turns on your party and is real sexy, cool, that's still available. But you can also have like the kind of weedy, not so powerful patron who is basically giving you illegal cable and uh oh what if their boss finds out or you know you have a patron who doesn't quite fit into this plane in the same way you don't quite fit into your plane and you guys are buds now and you're helping each other out in the ways that you can because you're from different places those are fun and you don't get stuck with like well how do you become best friends with the void between the stars that dreams of the world's end yeah probably yeah. not till you're level 20 mm. if then because it's always busy, especially I'm on the like, weekends. You find the forbidden book, eat it, start dreaming of forbidden thing. Not how you make a pact, but like if you want to tell a story where it's like, actually, like I'm best friends with my patron, and oh, I gotta I help see. them out of a scrape. Oh, I see, I see. That yeah, gets yeah. weird if your patron is Cthulhu. Yeah, right. That's You're totally gonna have weird. a harder time framing that story up. Yeah. Well, I I think certain patrons might have, uh, just fundamentally different relationships with their warlocks than others do oh totally yeah like a cthulhu i'm sure does not care about his warlocks no. at all like he might send them powers for inexplicable purposes but if they die great if they bother him they're gonna die and that's also great what about what about chibi cthulhu chibi cthulhu cares you see how cute he is I mean, like, and just to be clear, that's the point I'm trying to make, is that if you say a warlock pact must come through a patron who's super duper powerful, then you're really limited on the kind of story. You're basically always going to get fucked over. Yeah, We're not yeah. in the show yet, I can say that. Yeah. And, and okay, if you want that story, cool, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of limiting if the story always goes, eventually you will give in to the this greater power or you will have to defeat it and then start over at square one and there's so many other options like there's so many other ways you can tell this story so why limit yourself if you want those nobody's taking them away just to be clear but again i will die in the cell oh we don't want you to die well, taking all of you with me just to be clear i know <laughs> that's why we don't want you to die yeah, we don't want you to die for sure <sighs> I well, want to split view. We're getting Sorry. to that time where we uh, have to run the recap, right? Uh, yep. I mean, does anybody have any final comments? She kind of sick. Is B Dave <laughs> using his freely voice? Says Cassius. <laughs> which I mean, I think I'm not I opposed. Think you might be, you yeah, might be on wrong. something there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll see you in a bit after the uh, recap, and I guess in six minutes. All right. All right. Don't go away. Well, we're back in Rashomon, and the Irregulars uh, found themselves in a creepy, creepy forest, having parted ways with their guide at the edge of the lake and taken some witch boats across. This forest was dead looking, but somehow still alive, the p sort of place that, you know, looks haunted. It just gave off that kind of vibe, and it wasn't long before they ran into strange, potentially demonic owls, will-o'-the-wisps, ghosts, and eventually they came upon an encampment that had a bunch of spellcasters in it, which initially they thought might have been the witches, but turns out, not so much the case. But these spellcasters had a captive, so while the Irregulars engaged with the uh, spellcasters, Sebastian went and tried to free the captive, but things didn't go exactly to plan. The spellcasters managed to summon a Merilith, and 
One of the casters, after leaping headlong into Artemisia's lightning bolt, managed to break the summoning circle, which unleashed the thing just fully out into the open on its own, no control. And then it summoned more demons, and the regulars had to fight all of those too, so they kind of had their work cut out for them. That and I think Stong was flirting with the Merolith, I, but I don't know. I think she was flirting back too. Now, they did manage to defeat the demons, so hey, thumbs up. But the captive they released uh, immediately started seemingly looting the bodies, which caused a bit of a tense moment with Sturge, which resulted in a rapier being pointed at the woman's throat, and then her friends showing up. Lots and lots of friends. Now, it was made clear that the items that she was taking, at, at least already, were hers. Now, she had intended to take more than that, but that's neither here nor there at this point. And these were the witches that the Irregulars had been looking for, which they seemed fairly amenable, actually. Surprising for the quote-unquote dark witches of the woods. But with the Irregulars headed back to their village, we'll see how that pans out, especially with their mistress wanting to speak with Stong personally. I hope that goes well. 